Welcome, everyone. We are so glad to have you here with us for our new What's New in MECFS series, where we're really just going to be highlighting some of the ways that there is so much hope and movement in our field. So I'm here today with Professor Chris Ponting from the University of Edinburgh. Um, you may have seen the recent study that came out from the Decode ME project, which has really just been making waves in our community, which we're so excited about. So today I just kind of wanted to ask you a couple questions. If someone asked what has changed in MECFS science in the last year, what would you point to? I think I'd point to the fact that it's now quite normal to do big data studies. Um, and yes, I'm thinking about Decode ME, which had, uh, well, we have analyzed 15 and a half thousand people, um, but other people studies too, um, who have been looking at ME in a different way using data that um, in combination and in size provide quite a lot of power to find things out that smaller scale studies and ME has had lots of small scale studies really haven't been definitive about. When I mean definitive, I mean that they have produced things that have held up when people have tried to replicate. I am curious if there's been anything recently that has surprised you in your research process. I think my answer there really comes from how we try and do our science. So my answer is that we're always surprised when we find something, we have a discovery. The way we do our science is to basically say, let's, uh, let's ask um, whether we can find something, not uh, assume that we can, but we, we try and, and, and break things. We try and hold up a, a hypothesis and then say, actually, no, let, let's try and disprove it. Um, and that kind of tensioning is both hard work, but also incredibly valuable um, for finding things that will, um, will be replicated. So I think what has surprised us is that we have found things. We have found things in genetics um, that otherwise we might not have found. Um, we, we had in our study um, the expectation that perhaps we would find nothing. And that would be a huge disappointment um, for us personally, but more importantly for everyone, um, our participants and everyone around the world with, with ME. I'm so curious about what you would study if you kind of had double the funding. What would that look like for you? So I'm not going to say about double the funding. <laughs> Fair. I'm going to say how much six, seven times the funding, which is, a, sure. it, it, it's, it sounds greedy, but I think the ME community deserves better. And um, what I would want for the ME community is for not just what we have done in genetics, but a, a way of reading out the whole of everyone's genomes that then provides the full perspective, the full story, of ME, because we don't have the full story of ME genetics at the moment from our study. The full story will come from people's rare variants, uh, their, their um, larger changes, inversions, things like that. And, and these things that we've not been able to see in decode ME are exactly the things that the pharmaceutical industry needs to be convinced to develop new drugs. So it's not just me saying we need 20 million pounds for whole genome sequencing of thousands of people, which is the cost. But in my mind, it's what is absolutely required to convince the people, some of the people who matter, the pharmaceutical companies, to take the next step for the community towards effective therapies. Yeah, so it would really be getting to that next level of funding where we're then able to bridge the gap between all the research that we're seeing coming out in the field and what actually needs to happen to get the private industry and the pharma 
on board with actually taking the next steps from their end too. Yeah. 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 It's the right data. It's the right time and it's for the right people. I'm curious about what you would say to an MECFS patient who is struggling to stay hopeful about their future right now. So I understand that. I've talked to so many people who have that personal issue with, with keeping hopeful, particularly over tens of years that people have, have had their ME. Um, but what I hear back and what I truly believe is that attitudes are shifting. The evidence base is, is firming up um, and people who matter, healthcare professionals, family, friends, are becoming more compassionate and understanding of uh, disease, you know, symptoms that have been misunderstood and misrepresented for a whole, you know, people's whole lives. Now, all of that will, will need to be translated to better diagnostics, effective treatments, insightful research. I understand all of that. That will take time. Um, but I think what ME research is on now is a path that many other diseases have followed. And I think in, until a, a year or two back, I'm not sure ME was on that path. But I think it's, it's essentially... At, we're at the beginning of, of a, a process that perhaps would not have happened or wasn't happening a couple of years back, in my view. And I am curious about whether you would have anything you would want to say if you had, say, 60 seconds in a room with a policymaker about how governments can actually support the research community. I would say to a policymaker that it's unlike every other disease, aside perhaps from long COVID. ME is, is an exceptional disease and needs to be treated as such. It's exceptional in so many ways because of its gender bias, it's because of it, its historical uh, lack of funding and research and the, the way in which it's been um, uh, misrepresented for decades of is there anything else you'd like to communicate to the community or just want to share from, you know, the scientific world that you inhabit? I would say that science overall is an exciting place to be. Um, just reading every week the new science that's, that comes out in different fields, it's incredibly exciting. Um, and often discoveries and, uh, and new ways of thinking come from very unexpected places. And I think what we need to do in ME is to broaden our horizons and bring on board loads of people who have different perspectives. Um, and then I think we will all get to where we all need to, to get, which are effective diagnostics and, and, and therapy sooner. Thank you so much. This has been so hopeful and encouraging, and I'm so grateful for you taking the time to speak with us today.